Father God in heaven, one more time. One more time, God, we have gathered. We have removed ourselves from the cares of this world. Come together, God, to lift up the name of your son, Jesus. Father, to give ourselves a living sacrifice, to commune with you, to feel your presence. Father, thank you. Thank you for the praise and the worship. Thank you for a people who have not been careful about it, who have freely praised and worshipped. Now, God, here we are, about to enter into that portion of your word that you have declared this for today. God, I thank you for the Holy Spirit. He is our teacher and our God. Holy Spirit, thank you for walking alongside of me this week. And teach me more stuff I just did not know. Now, Father God, as I'm about to give this word to your people, God, I pray that the words of my mouth and the very meditation of my heart will be found acceptable in your sight. You are my strength. You are my redeemer. God, I pray that this word will be most effective with the hearers, that he and she that hath an ear would hear what the Spirit has to say today. Lives being transformed by your Spirit. This is our prayer. And God's people said, Amen. 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 Wonderful, wonderful. I'm going to ask if you will one more time get a hold of your word. Say Matthew 21, verses 18 and 19. Here beginneth the reading of God's holy word. Now in the morning, as he returned into the city, he hungered. And when he saw a fig tree in the way, he came to it and found nothing thereon, but leaves only, and said unto it, Let no fruit grow on thee henceforward forever. And presently the fig tree wither away. The word of the Lord for the people of God, you can take your seat. Amen. We're thankful for this series that God had us to start last week. And the series is entitled, The Christian's Whisperer. The Christian's Whisperer. And today, we want to minister with a sermon topic, Power Over Plants. Power Over Plants. Omnipotent. It means all power. It means universal power. This word, omnipotent, is a word that can only be attributed to one authority. That authority is God. Job 11, 7 through 11, New King James Version. It reads thus, can you search out the deep things of God? Can you find out the limits of the Almighty? They are higher than heaven. What can you do? Deeper than hell. What can you know? Their measure is longer than the earth and broader than the sea. If he passes by in prisons and gathers to judgment, then who can hinder him? For he knows deceitful men. He sees wickedness also. Will he not then consider it? Then Psalms 147 verse 5 says, Great is our Lord and of great power. His understanding is infinite. Our God 
the omnipotent God, the one who created things all in the beginning. That's who we serve. And this means that all that is in existence, uh uh-huh, all that exists, here it is, must know the voice of that which gave it its original voice. God gave the dog its bark. Uh Uh God gave the wind its blow. God gave the cat its meow. Uh God gave the trees their sway. All that God created has the ability to do that which God designed it to do. For example, human beings were created to praise and worship. (laughs) Glory to God. Uh uh You have within you the very base code, the genetic and inherent ability to praise and worship God. I'm telling you right now, I'm telling you right now, even when you come into the house and you say, I, I ain't going to do much today, I'm going to sit still, I, I'm going to behave myself. I tell you, by time the praise and worship gets glowing, you're set on fire, you can't keep still. You, you, you don't want to have anybody else seeing you praise and worship, so you're tapping your toe in your shoe. Lord have mercy. I, I'm telling you that human beings were created to praise God. Do I have a witness uh, that I have been created to praise and to worship God? Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. (laughs) Psalms 148 verses 13 and 14 says, Let them praise the name of the Lord, for his name alone is excellent. His glory is above the earth and heaven. He also exalted the horn. That means he lifts up your head. Anybody had a lifting up head moment? That's why you can come into the house of God because he lifted up your head. Something had you down, but he lifted up your head. Something had you to the ground, but he lifted up your head. Something had you praying, but he lifted up your head. And that's why we can praise him. He also exalted the horn of his people, the praise of all his saints, even of the children of Israel, a people near unto him. Praise ye the Lord. Psalms 102, 18. This shall be written for the generation to come, and the people which shall be created shall praise God. In other words... The Bible is telling us that at the time when this was written, God is letting us know there's going to come another generation. And it's not an option. They shall praise the Lord. And I got some news for somebody that even if a person dies a sinner, that when they great get in the morning, on the rapture, whether they like it or not, they're going to praise God. They're going to drop to their knees. Every knee shall bow. And every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is the Lord God. Now, I didn't say that they're going to go to heaven. I just said they're going to confess. Can you imagine the atheists? Can you imagine the Christian hater? That when they see the Son of God coming in the clouds, they're going to drop to their knees, and it's going to be too late. I said that while you have breath, while you have time, this is the time now to seek and to serve God. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it is. Created that way. Isaiah 43 and 7 says, Even everyone that is called by my name, for I have created him for my glory. (laughs) I have formed him. Yea, I have made him. God made you for his glory. Uh, I know we like to go around impressing other people, but I'm telling you, you were made to glorify God. Uh huh. In the very being that the first, foremost entity, being in existence, uh, power you've got to please is God. Yeah. Isaiah forty-five and eighteen. It says, "For thus said the Lord that created the heavens, God Himself that formed the earth and made it. He hath established it. He created it not in vain. He formed it to be inhabited. I, I am the Lord, and there is none else. Did you hear that? There is none else." 
Don't bring me something else. Don't offer me an option. I believe the word of God. There is none else. No one else will I praise. No one else will I worship. No one else will I glorify. No one else will I adore. No one else will I bow down for. I worship God. Mm -hmm. Now church, while you and I have been created to praise God, it does not mean that we will praise God. Uh huh. Each and every day there are millions of God's creation who refuse to give God praise. Uh, this is not acceptable. Let's examine and see what happens when creation decides to do its own thing. In so doing, let's look at the following three points. Point number one, his flow. His flow. His flow. Yeah. Point number two, his fig. <laughs> his fig. And then point number three, his favor. His favor. Let's, let's deal with it. Point number one, his flow. Jesus had a flow in his earthly ministry. His flow. I see things out of order and I deal with them. I see the lamb, I make them walk. <laughs> I meet up with the dumb, I leave them talking. I see the cripple, I leave them walking. I see the withered hand, I bring it back to life again. That's his flow. His flow. The flow of Jesus was that as he met up with those who were willing to yield to his healing touch, he indeed healed them. There was no one who exhibited faith who did not find the favor of Jesus and leave with a new healing or miracle. That was his flow. In this chapter of the book of St. Matthew, Jesus is once again in his flow. I like people in the flow, you know. It's like natural. They just do what they do. Yeah. In verses 2 through 9, Jesus saw a tied-up coat he saw this unridden and unused coat and loosed it to be of use to his own moment of triumphal entry into Jerusalem. In this chapter, it continues as Jesus sees those working in the temple. And he recognizes that they're not in his flow. In other words, they are behaving contrary to how they show it. They know better. They know that they ought not to be pimping the people while going into the temple. That they, they, they know that they ought not be cheating people in order for the people to gain entry into the house of God. I mean, I'm just going to imagine this. Holy Ghost, Jerry, or something else, you know. I mean, really. What if we charge the fee to come and hear this magnificent preacher? Some of you don't like that. That's your business. Uh-huh. That's all right. That's all right. I don't know why. Anyway, here we go. Watch it now. So what does Jesus do here? He stops their flow and destroys their purpose. So church, this is where I need you to understand something right here. Jesus knows what and who is lining up with his purpose. Yeah, his flow, mama, his flow. Jesus, <laughs> Jesus knows you don't have to be perfect. Let's get, that, let's get that straight. You don't have to be perfect. You just have to be in his purpose. Somebody's going somebody's to get that. You see, as, as I walk in his purpose, I am being perfected. Uh -huh. we, we, we don't gather together here on a Sunday morning, Sunday afternoon to say and testify to people that were perfect. What in the world? I could go to my doctor right now and he'll tell you I ain't perfect. <laughs> but what, what I am, be very sure, is in purpose. And watch this. As I continue to walk in purpose, I am being perfected to the image of his dear son. Uh -huh. As I walk in purpose, I am constantly got my eye on my Lord and Savior, Jesus, and I am coming to him and becoming as he is. 
That's why it's so important that the primary focus of every child of God is not your brother, your sister, your mama, your daddy. Your, uh, 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 uh. You've got to keep your eyes on Jesus. So you don't have to be perfect. You don't have to be the best and the brightest. You just have to do what God has called, called you to do. Ain't that wonderful? <laughs> you know, pat yourself on the back and say, give me a break. Give yourself a break. Take it easy. <laughs> yeah, relax, relax. I heard that. No, no. If you don't, that is, walking the purpose of God. If you don't, God will reveal that he is not pleased with you uh -oh, and expose this fact to all around you. Jesus has a flu. So Jesus has made his triumphal entry into Jerusalem. All is looking good. He has used the cult and cleaned out the cult. Did you get that? Did you get that? Did you catch? I wasn't even going to throw that. I just knew people would catch it. You, but just in case, here you go. He used, look, the, the rejected cult, C-O-L-T, he used. The accepted cult, C-U-L-T, he got rid of. And that was a church. I ain't saying nothing else. You gotta pay attention. Jesus leaves Jerusalem for the night and returns to Jerusalem in the morning. He left the city of Jerusalem Went to Bethany, got a little break. That city is about two miles away, two-mile walk. Then he re-entered into Jerusalem, the holy city. And that's where we meet him. He's right now in his purpose at Jerusalem. While Jesus is fully divine as God's son, he is yet fully human as Mary's son. So he's hungry. Some of you, as soon as I say that right now, you start to think about the lamb. You started to think, you know, the people think about the party, the set that got up. You know, so let me get back here. <laughs> Jesus was going back to Jerusalem. Look at it, verse 18. Now in the morning as he returned into the city, he hungered. Jerusalem. Jerusalem meaning peace. Can I tell you that Jesus is hungering for peace? Yeah. Huh? I isn't that what the world is hungering for, huh? Yeah. But strange, they won't accept the Prince of Peace, and they expect to find peace. Here it is, Jesus is making his way back into Jerusalem, peace. There's an expectation of Jesus, the Prince of Peace, to find all things that are associated with him will be as he is, peaceful. Now, this is not to say that peaceful Christians will never go through. Oh, anybody know as Christians go through? All right, there you go. It's not that you won't go through. It's how you. That's it. Uh-huh. Uh, that in going through turmoil, tests, and trials, you go through with a different attitude, a different behavior you carry within you. I told you the genetic code of Jesus, the DNA of Jesus. So there is a peace that surpasses all understanding when you could be mad and upset somehow the peace of God reigns in your mortal body and you're able to come through that situation supernaturally Christians who have the heart and mind of Jesus will go through storms peacefully peace in the midst of the storm I want to remind you don't leave Jesus out of your storm. You've got to take him into, into the storm. And that way you'll be able to go through, transition through the storm in peace. Now look at Jesus. Jesus has his focus right now to satisfy his natural hunger. He was going to eat. So his purpose, the purpose of Jesus, is to find food. Let's see what happens as he meets up with number two, the fig. The fig, 19. Hungry Jesus. Here we go. And when he saw a fig tree in the way, let's stop there. <laughs> he saw the fig tree in the way. In other words, watch it now, pay attention. The fig tree looks like it's in purpose. 
It's in the way that Jesus is moving. Oh, his, the fig tree is lined up right with God. That's, some, that's a marvelous fig tree. Stay tuned. Stay tuned. Fig tree. And when he saw a fig tree in the way, he came to it and found nothing thereon, but leaves only and said unto it, Let no fruit grow on thee henceforward forever. And presently the fig tree withered away. Church, please remember that Jesus knows how he made the fig tree. Yeah, yeah. He, he knows because in the beginning in creation, when he spoke the fig tree into existence, he placed in that fig tree the ability to produce food. It had a lot of leaves. Show off. Telling a story. I'm got leaves. I'm got leaves. Check out my leaves. Anybody want leaves? Anybody want leaves? Leaves for sale. Leaves for sale. But here's the thing. Shallow people can have leaves. Immature people can have leaves. I want to know where is the fruit. Uh-huh. By their fruit. Now, now, this, this is where you get messed up. I'm probably going all out of order, but I feel it now. We, 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 we're not willing to wait for time. See, pastor's patient. Pastor understands that it takes time for a leaf to grow. Got to plant the seed. Got to put it in the ground. Got to water it. It's got to brush through the tester. It's got to begin to grow. It's stem, you know, all this stuff doesn't, it don't happen overnight. So it's a matter of time. And you will see if that fig tree, okay, let's go there because we're all thinking about it. We will know if that person really has the fruit. I ain't looking for leafy trees. I ain't looking for leafy Christians. Uh -huh. I, I'm looking to see where's the fruit, where's the fruit. Where is a positive witness that you are who you say that you are? And the world is looking for leafy Christians, leafy Christians with fruit. Everybody, so you do know everybody in Bermuda's a Christian. You do know that. Yeah. Everybody. He's smoking herb. He, he know God. He a Christian. Huh? He want shacking and hacking his. Everybody. But in time, yeah. we're going to know if this big tree is walking in the purpose. Hear me, children of God. Is walking in the purpose for which God created it in the first place. Don't you let any wind, any storm, any type of contrariness stop you from bringing forth fruit. If you know that you've been called to do what you know you've been called, then you do it no matter what. This fig tree is testifying and lying. See, 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 see? Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. Listen, let, let me read a bit here. The leaves in study. This fig tree, once you saw the leaves, it was an indicator that fruit had to be there. Even if it was unripened fruit, the fruit, see, sweet Holy Ghost, thank you, catch this. In study, as I looked at it, it said the fruit could be under the leaves and could be unripened. Now, unripened fruit is going to taste a little bit of sour, bitter. God, you're sweet. God doesn't mind if you're unripened, if you're a bit bitter, huh? If you're not mature yet. It's you and you and you that want to be perfect. Give yourself, pat yourself on the back again. I said, give me a break. It's not that your fruit is going to be mature. It just has to be there. Because the fruit is an indication that production is happening. Uh huh. I may not produce as quickly as you. I may not produce as much as you. But be guaranteed that if I'm walking in the purpose and the will and the way of God, that there will be fruit. It's got to be fruit. Under the leaves. Can I say something else? I just got it. Not, ne not necessarily seen by everybody. Uh -huh. <laughs> the fruit's not that. I'm not going to be a show off. I'm not going to do things to be seen. Huh? I'm not going to be doing things primarily so that people will know how big, bad, and all that I am. How, you know, I'm not going to show off. Uh -uh. I'm not, watch this, watch this. I'm not going to show off. I'm going to show out. Did you get that? 
Let me tell you something. I've come to stake a claim on the authority of God that I will speak purpose into the lives of God's people. And furthermore, I've come not to warn, but to surely give out a clarion call that this island called Bermuda will not be taken down by the sinful deeds of man. But there's at Shekinah and that church and that church and that church and that church. We will stand to declare the word of God. We will honor God. We will worship God. We will declare his son that God gets the glory. God gets the glory. Oh God. Warfare going on. Take your seat, people of God. So you can be unripened, but you've got to be there. Now, if I see the leaves, this tells me that I should be able to come and see and partake of the fruit. That's another thing. Your gift and talent is not for you, it's for someone else. Uh huh. Every gift, every talent that God has given to you. It's so that you can be a blessing to others. Now please note that after Jesus' triumphant entry, there was the revealing of that which looked good, but was no good. Oh, semen, semen, semen. Church, I am convinced that life is balanced. That with mountaintop experiences, <laughs> one ought to be preparing themselves for Valley low experiences. I'm not trying to rain on anybody's parade, but we've got to get some reality here. That listen, I knew after my announcement last week about our new covering. I mean, you talk about being on the mountain. I'm telling you, I was on the mountain. I was on the pinnacle. I took a flag. I stacked the dirt. And I said, yes. Yeah, yeah. So I understood that I, I didn't know where it's going to come from. But I said, oh, Lord, what this week about? Something's going to happen. And guess what? Are we not worshiping God today? Yeah. Praising God? It doesn't change. Oh, what you go through does not change your genetic code. What you go through uh, does not stop you uh, from being able to praise God. What you go through means that you will be able to prove that you're still a worshiper. Still a worshiper. Still a worshiper. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. All right. All right. Let's move on. So this is such a moment. Leaves. Oh, my goodness. But no fruit. Leaves, but no fruit. That's it. Oh, God, it hold you. Thank you. So, so just now, the Holy Spirit talked to me real quick. He said, Maria, I, know, I think I asked the question, you didn't answer. I said, how do, you, how do you tell if you've got a false witness? He says, in time, true witnesses will come and contradict what the false witness said. So therefore, all we have to do is continue to stand up in truth. And in time, that which is not truthful will automatically be revealed. <laughs> See, let me, let me tell you where we get in trouble. Now, this is fun now. Let me tell you where we get in trouble. We have an inkling that, that that's a fault. That's not, that's false. What we start doing is trying to reveal it. See, 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 I told you her. She looked, see, see. No, 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 no. Let God do that. Oh, Lord Jesus. Let the word of God, the truth, huh? Uh, the word of God reveal that which is unlike itself. False witness. Fig tree. The leaves are a false witness. The leaves say this, come to me. I have plenty of fruit to give you. I can feed you. I am here for you. I will meet your need. That's, that's what it's testifying. However, we will see that this tree is lying. Lion tree. <laughs> mm -hmm. It is out of order. Jesus is hungry. And Jesus approached this tree knowing that he made it in creation to function a certain way. Church, Jesus sees no fruit. In other words, Jesus sees that this fig tree, watch this, is in rebellion 
to its natural order of behavior. I, I better not try. You know I want to trick you. Tell, tell me, say no, Pastor. Don't go there, Pastor. Okay. All right. Hands up. Who wants Pastor? Don't go there. Put your hands up. Don't go there, Pastor. Oh, look at this. Who wants Pastor to go there? Pastor, I'm, I have to do this, Bermuda. I have to do this. I'm going to go there. God made things to function in a natural order and behavior. God made man to function with world man. God made a man without a womb to function with a woman who has a womb. Anything else is a lying wonder. Anything else is a big tree that's lying. You made me say it. You made me say it. Devil is a liar. Oh, oh, it, 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 it. <laughs> well, you know what? I'm going to challenge you people since you're so smart and, and all that. Now, now I'm going to challenge you since you know what's wrong. Do you know what you were created to do? Uh huh. Do you know what you should be doing? Huh? Whether you're at home, whether you're on the job, no matter how you feel. Thank you very much. Give God glory. Praise the Lord. No matter what. Oh, you lift up the name of Jesus. You give him glory. He's worthy to be praised. He's worthy. Glory to God. From the rising of the sun to the blowing down of the sand. Your name is worthy to be praised. All right. All right. Church, I told you earlier, I'll reiterate it, that it took some time. <laughs> for that rebellious tree to show forth its rebellious nature. No sense trying to prove or rush things. I, not me. No, no, no. See, if you do it, then they're going to blame you. You expressed me. You said this about me. But you're a long time. They'll grow and automatically show who they are. I'm telling you, and the more the anointing rises in the church, the more that which is not of the anointing must flee from the church. I'm just hoping and praying that I got some people who know that they're anointed of God, who know that they're full of the glory of God, who understand that they've been made to move from glory to glory, even as by the Spirit of the Lord, and that you have determined, oh, pastor, you don't have to worry because I've got some fruit to give. I've got some fruit to show forth. Oh, God, take your seat, people. You know, they can say all they want. Um, they, can, they can make leafy statements. <laughs> you got to watch out for the leafy statements. I remember teaching science. We, we usually said that the leaves were the broad, broad, flat leaves. Green. Right? That means the leaves are always testifying. I'm telling you, saying, look at me. I'm full of food. I'm where the food of the plant is made. I can help you. I will give you strength. I'll be here because you need me. I'm a leaf. Mm. You're a leaf. You ain't your fruit. You're a leaf. The statement sound reproductive. However, it will be tested in time. <laughs> Whether you have leaves that truly have fruit. Now, the leaves are the food factory <laughs> of the plant. See, any science student I taught, that was the definition, one of the definitions. The leaf is the food factory of the plant. So the leaves, if I see the leaves, there ought to be food production. So if you all say that your leaves, you're also telling me, Pastor, I've got food. Pastor, I can do this in the church. Pastor, I can do that in the church. Pastor, I will live to glorify God. That's the food. So Jesus made the tree to work that way. Therefore, the expectation of Jesus is that when he comes to get his food from the factory, the factory should be full. 
restoration people. Yes. Yet he comes to the food factory and it is completely. I mean, it wasn't even sharing a bud. It wasn't even sharing the potential of fruit. Wow. You talk about deceiving. It was empty, nothing. The tree is, watch it, the tree is not being noisy like the storm or the Sea of Galilee was. No, this tree is, watch this, silently loud. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Silently loud. In other words, it has been operating in rebellion for a long time. And church, even silent rebellion is noisy to Jesus. If by now you've been in church five years, six, seven, eight, you're not walking in your purpose, you're not doing anything to assist in the church, that's not a good thing. Uh, you must testify that you are producing some sort of food substance and that you're willing to feed others. The Christian's whisperer, that's Jesus, will now silence the noise of this unproductive fig tree forever. Okay, so, so Jesus is not just sweet. Why well, couldn't he just say, fig tree, be thou healed. Fig tree, bring forth fruit. Fig tree, I'm going to give you another chance. When you are in open rebellion, you have openly made a statement of who you are and what you will do, and God says, I ain't got time for that. I, I, I promise you, I promise you. Watch this. Church, let me show you something here. I want you to follow me. I'm going to show you something. Um, don't follow me. I mean, I'm staying in the church. You know, but anyway, here we go. <clears throat> okay. This was delicious. This was delicious. <laughs> All right, here we go. Jesus is the living water. All that which is alive is composed of plenty of water. Plenty of water. The human body is 60% made up of water. 60%. Let's go deeper. Let's look at the blood. There's life in the blood. Blood is, watch this, 92% water. Water, 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 water. Water, 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 water. Water, 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 water. Jesus is the living water. The water in our body. The water in the red blood cells, the blood cells, they do that which is a reflection of Jesus. There's life in the blood. The blood has 92% water. That tells me that water is a major component of life. I just told you Jesus is the living water. All right, all right, all right, all right. Let's take you there. Jesus, the living water, looks at the barren fig tree and takes his water back. <laughs> Currently, plenty of water in the fig tree because there's leaves, a plush, the green. Looks, looks all fruitful in it, plush and green. But Jesus comes for his purpose. And when he doesn't see his purpose, all the water... That was in it, he takes his water back. You wonder why some preachers can fall? You wonder why some saints of God can fall? You wonder why those that once testified, glorified and shouted at jumping can fall? Because when they walk out of the purpose, out of the will of God, God takes his water back. He takes his spirit back. He takes his presence back. He takes his anointing back. Living water. Shabbatotoyorobose takes his water back. That's why things happen. Sheba Yarobo Ketessa. Jesus. Powerful. Powerful. Holy Ghost had to tell me that. When Jesus, the living water, takes his water 
out of the fig tree, well, if it's life in the blood, the blood is made up of 92%, and all that water is removed, means all that's left is whatever is left, but ain't no water in it, so it's dead. Come on, let me tell you something I love about Jesus. He can speak a present word, and it'll happen right away. If Jesus can speak life and somebody raises from the dead, he can speak and take away life, take away the water, and it immediately dies. God. Let me read on here. Watch this. Jesus, the living water, takes the living water out of the fig tree, and the fig tree dies right there. When Jesus sees a false witness <laughs> that he cannot count on to do as he told them to do, he will remove his water. He'll remove his spirit. Water is symbolic of the Holy Spirit. I take not thy presence away from me. Remove not thy Holy Spirit from me. I need thee. Oh, I need thee. Every hour, I need thee. Jesus. Watch this. He removes his water. He removes his spirit and his presence from them. You ever have, have people, you know they were in church. Years, years, and now can't stand church. I mean, don't even whisper. If you don't have the water, you ought to hate church. If the water's not in you, you ought to hate church. Because you have no presence of God or his spirit in you. That's why, let me say this, and I, mean, I know I'm going to visit this here. I'm so thankful you are at least in the church. That means you don't hate church. I've done some things, some babies in church, and some people won't step in because they hate church. But I want to congratulate visitors even for being here for whatever reason. Thank God you're here. If you reach, if you ever hate church, if you ever hate Christians, I deal with it all the time on Facebook. And you know what? I don't fuss with them because my spirit will never agree with their spirit because they're without the spirit, without the Holy Spirit. Wasting my time? Glory to God, I thank you, Holy Ghost. Now, now, so without his spirit, they will surely die. Now, because now, because we are yet under grace, all current human beings who are living as fig trees, as this fig tree, this fig tree, still have time to repent. You, t what kind of God do we serve? That even though we hate them, we don't like them, we don't like Christians, he says, you're under grace. I'm going to let you live. And hopefully one day you're going to come into the church and you're going to hear a word and you're going to connect with me one more time. Huh? Uh, we're under grace. Be grateful for grace. Put your hands together for grace. Glory to God for grace. His grace and his mercy. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. No. However, one day time will turn into eternity. And fruitless fig trees will be revealed and sentenced to death. There will come a time of separation. There is a thing as heaven and there is such a thing as hell. And only those who are bearing the fruit of this walk of Christianity will find that they make it into heaven because they are of the spirit of their father. They, they, they walk like them. They talk like them. Uh, you know what the word says they actually do. So here Jesus shows, this is it, that he has the power to remove water. That's what he did, fig tree, and he shows that he has power to remove water from a situation. <laughs> Jesus then follows up with another lesson to his disciples. I teach this to disciples. I'm not primarily teaching sinners, you know. I'm teaching the disciples. Sinners are going to listen in and some are going to be drawn in. But I've got to teach the disciples. Here we go. Point number three, the favor. Verse 21. Jesus answered and said unto them, Verily I say unto you, If you have faith and doubt not, ye shall not only do this which was done unto the fig tree, but also if ye shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed and cast into the sea, it shall be done. <laughs> Let's do this. Pay attention, disciples. Jesus here is saying, I can, let's do it this way, remove water from a situation and 
and I can add water to a situation. So if you have a mountain, glory to God, I feel like an old time Baptist just now. If you have a mountain, Jesus is saying, I can take your mountain and I can cast it into the sea. In other words, I can take your mountain situation and I can add it to water. I can take your mountain experience, watch it now, figurative, and add my spirit to it. So it doesn't matter if you're dealing with a fig tree or a mountain. It doesn't matter if you have to remove water or add water. It doesn't matter if you need joy or you need to get rid of anxiety. Jesus says, it is my water that is the remedy for the situation. Not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, said the Lord. That's what it is, Holy Spirit. Add water to it. Tell your neighbor, add water. Uh huh. I, 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 I can remove water from the fig tree. And I can move that mountain into the sea. Things that seem impossible are very possible when you move according to faith. You cannot look at the facts that it is a lively tree today. You cannot look at the fact that your issue is a huge mountain blocking your way. Uh uh, uh uh, uh uh. All you need to do is to understand that when Jesus sees your seed of faith, seed of faith, all you need is faith. All you need is a seed, size of a mustard seed. God, yeah, like, like an x-ray laser beam, looks down and he locates, oh, ooh, ooh, I see me in them. Uh -huh, I see faith. Oh, oh, who do I see? I see one that can speak life into their lifeless situation. I see one who believes that huh, that problem is not as big as it seems. Uh, that if I just keep on speaking by faith, that God's will will be done in your life. And so God sees your seed faith, and he will bring the victory to you. The only limitation <laughs> of what God will do is what you limit God to. Now, your job, here's your job. I'm winding down. Your job, according to the word of God, Leave verse 21. Is to pray, believe, and receive. Sounds easy. Thank you, easy. Praying is the toughest thing for God's people. To stop, slow down, turn off everything, ignore everything, let that phone ring, let the tweet a tweet, tweet, tweet. Huh? Let the IP go, whatever. Just let it go and start praying. Oh, I wonder if somebody this week will put an impossible situation before God and turn off everything and begin to pray. Uh huh. I tell you, you become your own preacher. You become your own teacher. You slap yourself a high five because when you're praying, you're believing. You pray and you believe, and then you'll get up off your knees and you'll have your hands out. Why? Because you're ready to receive. You're ready to receive what God. God has said it belongs to you. You gotta pray, believe, and then receive. See, and this is the thing. Often, you know, you, you, you prayed, you were doing good. You prayed, you got up, you were re believing. That, that, that prayer, you, you know, you know you went into the third heaven with that prayer. But here's the thing: you meet up with fruitless fig tree people. They say, he, you sure he said that? Yeah. Oh, I know about that. Didn't go that way when I tried. And, ooh, boy. Now, the best thing to do is go back praying. Yeah. <laughs> but what we tend to do is come into agreement. Yeah. Why would you come into agreement with a fruitless fig tree? I just want to know. I just want to know. People, I never pay attention to people. I ain't got nothing going for them. And by paying attention, now let's, let's get this proper connotation. I don't build on what they say. I see it. I acknowledge it. I ain't going to be rude. I ain't going to say nothing because that wouldn't be nice. But I ain't building on it. I'm going to tell you that right there. Glory to Jesus. So me, some, somebody caught that. I had, went down for a black one, came out. <laughs> I just like that myself. I remember it's done. Watch this. The favor of God. This is what I need you to know, church. The favor of God is the faith 
that you have in God. Not the faith I look. I appreciate my mama's faith. Trust you and me. My mama's faith ain't going to work with what I got to do. Mama, let your faith work for you. I, I appreciate your testimonies, your faith testimonies. But I recognize your testimony won't take me through. I got to have my faith. I need you to know, Glory, I see you there. God never fails. We fail, but God doesn't fail. And I told you already, as long as you have breath in your body, you have an opportunity to regrow your faith. Oh, yes, you do. Be sure that you are not being done away with. Be sure about that. If you say you love God and you serve Jesus, do so in spirit and in truth. For the day is coming when all shall be revealed. Every fig tree would then be judged. Oh, no, Pastor, we don't believe in judging. What do you think Jesus did? By the way, if you study it, it's a parable that relates to the rapture. That he's coming for his food. Who he planted in the earth. Who he permitted to be born. And he's coming to see if you're bearing the fruit. And if you're not bearing the fruit, he's taking his spirit back. Too many people dying. Dying in sin. Spirit will never live eternally with God. Today this word spoke about the Christians whispering. Meaning Jesus who comes in and he settles the situation. He silenced that which is contrary to his way. And the question is today. If Jesus Christ were to come through those skies. Break through the eastern cloud. Would you be caught up to me? Would you be forever with your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ? If you don't know Jesus to the pardoning of your sin, I want you to slip your hand up and then put it back down. And I promise you, we will not be embarrassing you. I just need to know who I'm praying for this week. You're not a Christian. Check the overflow for me, please, people. Let's make sure that we're praying for you. Everybody in the house is saying that they are Christian. That they do everything Jesus says for them to do. That they honor God's word. They live according to God's word. Praise the Lord. Children of God, you have recognized that this sermon calls for you to be accountable for the fruit that God. Look, here's the thing. This is the thing I like. You can't run away from the fruit. <laughs> Watch this. Because it's encoded in your DNA. Listen here. You like that, mama? My God. Listen here. Watch this. Let, let me hook it up with something. I'm going to get in trouble again, but it's all right. You can't run away from being a man if you're born a man. You can chop off. You can add on. But your DNA still says man. I'm, I'm just here to tell you. you. You can trans anything you want. You can trans anything you want. So again, I'm saying, this is what, if God has placed his spirit in you, has placed his DNA in you, and he has because he made you, you can't run away from that. The best thing to do, I'm so glad I did it when I was young. Embrace, yeah, surrender, embrace that thing. So you can like live decades doing the will of God. So many people wait too late in life. And then they say, man, I should have did this. Yeah, it, it's fabulous. It's fantastic. So my brothers and sisters in Christ, you've listened to this message. You say, you know what? I, I need to make sure, I need to make sure I'm walking in bearing and bringing forth the fruit and that God sees that fruit on my tree. If I'm speaking to you, I want you to stand to your feet right now. Stand to your feet. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you. Oh, God, I'm going to show forth, God. I don't care how much time passes. I'm going to show forth that, that, that I am being led by the Spirit of God. Thank you, Lord. I'm looking around because what a mighty army. A 
Yes, God continues to grow us. I'm not there yet, but I'm going to get there. I'm going to be closer tomorrow than I was yesterday. You know what I'm saying? Right, right? I, 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 no, man, no, man. No. I ain't perpetrating like that. I'm still growing. I'm still good. But this is what I like. Mm -hmm. I, I love it when we recognize we want to do battle. Let's bow our heads. Father God in heaven, God, we thank you for your word. God, your word has been plainly taught. God, we understand that you require more of us than a showing up. The name of the poem is, Be Encouraged, Heaven Awaits. He will wipe every tear from their eyes. There will be no more death or mourning, crying or pain, for the old order of things have passed away. Revelation 21, verse 4. Today, many are becoming weary. The enemy is trying to steal your faith. He knows his time is short and that for you, heaven waits. God wants you to be encouraged to make solid your decision. So he gave me a glimpse through a beautiful heavenly vision. The vision was of heaven, a place made just for you and me, a place beyond your wildest dreams. Immediately, I fell on bended knee. An angel took me by the hand. My heart, it gently raced. It was truly unbelievable the beauty of this place first I saw Moses he smiled and said to me encourage all God's people to cross their own Red Sea wow. tell them by faith to stretch their arms open wide for heaven does await you on the other side I then saw bottles of water the colors were awesome and bright saints of God what I saw was such a brilliant sight. God's anointing surrounded each bottle. His voice was heard and it was not faint. He said, this right here, my daughter, are the tears of the saints. There were tears of joy, tears of gladness, tears of breakthrough, tears of sadness. But this one thing I know, and I surely can't deny, in heaven, he has promised to wipe every tear from your eyes. Further along, there were babies. I saw them and I cried, for I knew without a doubt they left their parents because they died. They said, tell my parents don't be sad. I'm lying safely on Jesus' chest. I'll see them up in heaven, so let your soul find peace and rest. I saw Paul, and he said, finish your course. It gets hard, but press on through, because heaven is truly worth it. He has a crown of life for you. Then there was Job, who served God with all his heart, lost everything, and had much trouble. He said, I promise you, by faith go through, because our God will give you double. You see, there'll be no more death, crying or pain. What you're enduring right now will be for your gain. You'll see God's face as he sits on his throne. He'll gently remind you, you were never alone. You'll have your own mansion, walk streets of pure gold. You'll never have to worry about your body growing old. He's already promised you he's making everything new. So while here on earth, be willing to go through. You see, you can't compare your situations down here and all that you're going through. Stay focused, love much, and do what he's called you to do. Set your affections on things above and all that he has in store. For you will be changed in the twinkling of an eye and live with him forevermore. Be encouraged. Heaven awaits. Wow. That's